Hello, everyone. This is Christian. I want to go over Unit 12 assignment, the CRUD operations using MongoDB. As you know, in the web development, also in technology, things change quite quickly. So um, the instructions in the PDF I gave uh, to you and probably in Unit 11 or so, the instruction there, uh, even this unit, um, it's quite old. So please use this PDF, which I created here to um, complete this assignment, okay? Now, when you connect to MongoDB, you should and you are actually required to use the async await pattern to make sure you are connected to the MongoDB asynchronously. In the past, you didn't have to do that, but now you have to do that, okay? So the instruction here has everything you needed to complete this assignment, especially, so part A and B, basically just to install Node.js, you start everything there. And then right here, um, where I put this little box here. This is your first GET API. Uh, I mean, you're connecting to the MongoDB, okay? So also recommended that you use a um, 127.0.1 instead of the localhost keyword because some systems uh, do not recognize or differentiate that. And so it's always safe to use this IP address as opposed to the localhost, okay? Especially when you're working with MongoDB. And so here you can see the difference I put here uh, compared to the older version is that now this part right here from here to here, it's a callback function. You want to be able to connect to the database using the await keyword, okay? In order to use the await, your function here, which is this guy right here, must be prefixed with the async, okay? So they go together. Without this async, you can't really call await um, as far as I know so far yet, okay? So they go together. The await here is just another way to um, cause asynchronously and also, also kind of like destructure or flatten your connection, make it a little bit easier to understand. You can see here probably something beyond uh, um, you know uh, this class for now. But when you make connections, usually when you call uh, it connect function, when you call any of the um, query functions like define, delete, insert, and update, and so on, or whatnot, all of those functions, you must use the await in front of me, okay? This is this is okay. I think this too, you don't have to do this. But so once you connect it, you just basically select the data. That's fine. But when you do a search or query, you must use a wait uh, to do that. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. That is the uh, the big change. So I'm going to show you just quickly how to do this. And um, also how you can test using the Postman, which also mentioned in the uh, code. So here um, in the IDE, I'm going to already create one call it API. And again, make sure you have MongoDB installed. If you don't have that installed, you may you have to make sure you you know install the MongoDB. Huh? Uh, I don't think I have it. I think I, I'm I might have it already, but uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I already have it. So okay, so I'm gonna run this um, program. Make sure it's running and it's working. Okay, so it's at port eighty eighty again. I mean eight nine zero zero. I'm gonna go and launch Postman. I'm do everything in the Postman. Here you go. And then this is the address you want to get. So copy this address here and paste it right here. And we want to go to the API dash users. Okay, if I do and send, you see that it returns nothing as a one. This means there's no data return. And the reason why is because I'm going to close this now because of my get, right? These are your standard get APIs. Okay, notice the uh, pattern, right? Just to your regular pages. I'm not going to do that. Uh, down here is where we do the, the, the MongoDB connection. So we connect that to using this function here. And then the client is the one that connects to the database. So here again, I copied already, put it here, make it a little bit faster. Um, the, the user here, uh, let's see, you can see we have a connection to the database, okay? And then I using the test database has a user collection. Make sure you spell this correctly. I've seen some of your um, your assignments, you use a single word like this as opposed to a user with a, a plural. So this is the name of your collection. Again, it's like table. If you name it correct incorrectly, like even like, like um, you know, T like that, Mongo will take it. It will create one for you if it doesn't have one already. So it's not going to crash your program. And you may wonder why it's not working. Okay, so it's very, very uh, subtle. So just make sure this is correctly um, entered here. And that would cause a very um, a difficult logic error to test. So that's that. And then again, here, when you call the find function, you pass in, in this case, empty object. So it will, it will grab everything if there's anything in there, return to array, and then you await that until you get the data back, and then you send a result 
um, and, and down here. Now, uh, just to make sure that every of these API calls, okay, you must have a way to terminate the action. And um, so you can have many, many, uh, these are called middleware functions. And this is one of them. You can have another one in between or after here, doesn't matter, okay? So I could have another one here like this, right? And then I can have another one like this. So it's like, it's a chain that will propagate from left to right. And if this one here happens to terminate with a, with a send function, then the rest of the function or uh, middleware will not get called. Okay, so yeah, that's why you have the next, next, next. You can propagate down the chain that way. Maybe this part does one thing. Maybe this retrieve the database. You get the data, you pass it over to the next one. And you you know, and then you process the data here and you do and, and so forth. Okay, we don't, uh, you don't see I do that, but that is usually the case. So we just basically re go directly to this uh, one here. Okay, so again, make sure you put a sync here. If you don't do that, you can see the red lines here. So you cannot use await that is required. Um, so you make the connection and then so forth here. So we terminate one way down here. Now, I want to show you one thing if I happen to, um, uh, let's see. Okay, so if I, so I'm going to the correct um, uh, user, API users, and I'm not sure why it's not returning data. I should have some data return, unless maybe by database has no data there, I suppose. Um, we can check, right? I'm gonna go to, um, let's see, Compass. And also make sure you are, um, I don't have, a, I don't have a, not a Compass in my system. I should have, make sure your database is actually running. And and you can also test in the browser. So let's just do that. First, let me go ahead and, uh, where, did I go? where did it go? Okay, so let's just paste it over here. And that is working correctly. So it's just a regular site. If I go to um, API-users, right? And it says fail because I don't have a users uh, view, which I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't have it. Um, uh, but let's see, it's, this is right down here. Uh, no, sorry, where is it at? Okay, right here, right? So I don't have a user um, template for the user. So let's 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 do this. Um, let's turn this off. And we just return, we just send the result here, okay? So we'll see what that looks like for the result. Go back in again, refresh it. Um, see, you see that I have some data coming back, okay? So I do have data in my database system. Um, and, and then there are like a couple of them. Okay, so it does work in, in this example here. Now, why did not... I receive anything when I do the postman. For example, again, if I do a test again, right? Why there's no data here? I wonder why I did something incorrect here. Uh, because I should be able to see some data coming from the uh the send there. Um uh, API users. Uh, okay, so let's see why. Call that here. I, sh I should return result back. And that could be one of the reasons why we not seeing it because of the uh, weight thing. But let me just do this, okay? Let's just say I put here um, into a bracket. So I know for sure that that's something is being passed and returned to the postman. So if I do it again, okay, still not getting it. Hmm. Oh, I'm okay. I'm, I'm using the post, sorry. Should be a get all this time. Okay, so you see that it does come back. Um. So here we go. And the draw data is coming back via the send here, okay? So it, just, it did assign that to the data. So if I don't have this return here, so you happen to, let's just say, forgot to do that. Okay, let's, let's just use this one here for now, that's okay. Now, let me clear this and, well, I'm gonna just run it again. So if you don't have a send, you're gonna see this message is sending request. That means that the, the, the front end sends a message request to the back end and the back end is still processing data until you actually send a result back. So it always do that automatically. I mean, not automatically, but it does expect a return uh, from the server. So it is your job to make sure the data has been sent back. Until it does it, it was just gonna wait until it hangs for, I think a minute or two, I'm not sure how long it is, and it will just terminate uh, saying it could not be reached, okay? So you have to return one of these guys back, either um, any one of these, the sender, uh, the send, the render, the send file, or whatnot, and you will get the data back, as you can see here. Okay, so I get an error message because I'm using a um, 
a, a view I'm trying to render to the view. I don't have it. So this is not the one I'm going to use, right? I'm going to use the result coming back. So I'm going to pass this to the database, to the sender, okay? That is the result here. I did not make it nice, so you can see how that is, but um, that's the idea. All right, so that is that. I also just show you that if I do have, uh, don't have the await here, you're going to see again that it's not going to get any data, okay? Because we not, did not wait, or we did not do it asynchronously. It will basically try to call this. Even before that, we are going to send the result first before this actually runs, right? So that's why when you get the data, it's actually no, there's nothing there. It's an empty object as opposed to something that it's been returned. So the await means just wait until I get the data, then you can process it. So that means it will actually pull the system for, for a while there. Right, so that's how it works. Now, for the other APIs, they're putting, uh, um, these are all the same. So notice you have to put a sync here. Uh, the connection is the same thing. You do exactly the same as this. The only difference you will see is just this function here, okay? So I'm um, finding, that us say get, uh, all the all the data for the user ID. You want to make sure you get the data first. Now, one thing I want to also be um, make sure that if you do have a const like UID like like this, you get this data from the params dot user ID, right? Okay. Now, make sure that this ID that you receive them from the user or from the your yeah, browser matches the ID in MongoDB. Uh, as you can see, if I go over here again, retrieve the data. Okay, you see that the ID fields like these guys right here. This is a string. It's double coded, right? Same as this, but these numbers you can see this a numeric. Now, when you compare this, you know, a user ID, they have to be of the same type. It's a very strict type. So, um, if you're trying to compare numbers against string, it's not going to find it. So, you want to make sure that in your database you have only numbers or is a string. 